Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. So um, today we're going to be talking about um, Hacktoberfest. So the lessons I've learned and some tips that I want to share with you. So if you don't know what Hacktoberfest is, Hacktoberfest is a month long uh, open source contribution by those on GitHub. You could sign up on their Hacktoberfest website and then just go ahead and start contributing through your GitHub. Any contributions you make through your GitHub, any PR requests that you make um, that you submit, then you'll, you'll automatically, those submissions will be automatically counted towards Hacktoberfest. Um, and then just open source in general. Uh, these tips will also help if you're just trying to figure out how to get involved in the different projects that are on GitHub and just trying to put yourself out there more. So these tips will definitely help for that. Okay, so the first tip that I'm going to recommend for you is starting earlier in the month. So one of the things that I did is I started like in the middle of the month and I found that um, it was just a little bit more difficult to find things that needed to be done. So I would recommend that you start early on in the month. So there's tons of new things that you could work on and things that haven't yet been completed yet. In that same regard, I would, um, since I did start later on in the month, I came across tasks that, you know, I may have said, hey, I'm gonna work on this. And then it turns out that, hey, you know, somebody else has already completed APR for this, so you're not able to work on it. So those types of things happened a lot. And so to prevent that, I would suggest that you start earlier in the month. The second thing is, I would work on code bases that have pretty good documentation, um, especially if this is your first Hacktoberfest or your first open source project. Um, I came across like the first hack that I wanted to do and said I would work on it, and then I looked at how to set things up. Uh, they had like a wiki doc or something like that, and I was looking into it and I was like, what? And there wasn't a lot of information. so. I would recommend that you start with something that's better documented so that you're able to actually contribute something to that code base. Um, and if you can't find something, I would definitely try to reach out, uh, see if they have a Slack, or maybe write a comment within the issue that was created to see if you can get additional information that way. So the third thing is to work on languages or frameworks that you're familiar with. So there's several projects during Hacktoberfest and then in open source, generally speaking. And um, but I would just recommend that you start with languages that you're actually familiar with. That way you're able to knock out a couple of tasks, get those done, and you'll feel more empowered to want to continue. A lot of times people will be defeated if they start something and they can't finish it and then they kind of just give up on it. So. To prevent that, I would start with something that you're familiar with and then go from there. After you have completed a few things using languages and frameworks that you are familiar with, I would step out of your comfort zone at that point and try to work on something that is different so that you can get an overall better experience. The fourth thing is don't be afraid to ask questions about what's expected from you from the task. Sometimes the tasks are very vague and they don't convey um, what's actually um, expected of you um, say that somebody says hey I need a navigation bar well I mean that could look a lot of different ways so you want to make sure that you are asking for specifics so that you can deliver what's expected um, of you so just make sure that you ask additional information hey are we using a type of framework for this um, you know do you have a specific way that you want it to look that sort of thing just to get a better understanding the sixth thing is to make sure that you're paying attention to the labels that's on the the search for their hacktoberfest so um, it should take you to a link and that link will have uh, different projects listed out towards the side and then they'll also have uh, different search terms that you could search by you could search by language you could search by um, or you could search and filter by language or um, just by the type of task that it is. Some of them might have a label that's specifically for like people's first Hacktoberfest or you know newbies and stuff like that. So pay attention to those labels and so that you can find the projects that are going to work for you or work best for you. So the seventh thing, number seven, is to contribute to class, um, 
contribute to projects that you've worked on before. So say that you worked on like the first project that you found and you had a good experience with it and you, um, you know, just go back to that project and see if there's any other issues that you could work, that you could knock out, do a pull request for. Um, those types of things are gonna allow you to contribute more and have a better experience and it beats having to set up an entire new project in your dev environment. So you've already got that one up and running, so continue to work on it if it was a good experience for you, and then move on to another one. Uh, the eighth tip is to contribute, continue to contribute to open source even after Hacktoberfest is over. This is one of those that I need to do a better job at, because um, I, I did really good in Hacktoberfest, and I started to really look into more projects and then after it ended I kind of fell off so I would encourage you to continue along with the process of uh, um, contributing to open source just so that you can be more familiar with it and um, just it, it really helps in your skill set as well especially if you're trying to learn a new language or you're just getting started as a bonus I would say also to um, make sure that you are um, working on projects that are actually projects and not considered personal projects. I ran across a few personal projects as I was working and um, you could tell it wasn't good documentation. Um, some of them weren't using like any type of framework. It was just HTML and CSS and that's not a bad thing if that's not something that you're looking for. You definitely don't want to waste your time you know trying to contribute to something that you you aren't excited about or that um, isn't going to work for you in the long run so um, I would just be careful with that and make sure that you're actually contributing contributing to things that are um, going to be exciting for you going to create a good experience but. all right so I want to wrap up this video by saying thank you for watching uh, comment below if you participated in Hacktoberfest I know it's long been over but if you've contributed in the past let me know if you contributed to open source let me know below as well if you enjoyed this video you thought the tips were helpful comment below or give me a like I really appreciate you all for watching hope it was helpful and I'll see you in another video